Hey guys, welcome back to the show. And today I want to talk to you about how to use the Hasselblad lenses. In this case, we're going to be talking about the Hasselblad C lenses. If you're confused about the terminology, the C lenses were the first ones, mostly in silver. Then they have the CT, which are this one basically, which is the C with the T for multi-coating from Zeiss. And then you have the ZF and the uh, CB, which is like a CF, but it has one less element in the lens. So this time we're going to do the C uh, T, which is the second version. It works exactly the same for the C uh, silver ones, but I want to tell you a bit of how it works and what are the things on the lens if you're new to the system, or maybe you already have a Hasselblad, but you didn't know about a few of the things that it can do. First, always, I always mention this book is a must buy if you're gonna be a future Hasselblad owner or you are a Hasselblad owner. Saves you a bunch of time and research on the internet. Has all these kind of details that I'm gonna to talk to you about. But if you're not one to buy a book and you rather look on YouTube, this is the video for you. So let's put this aside. First and foremost, this is the 80 millimeters CT. As I said, the T standing in red there is for uh, multi-coating, which is a cause ice way of saying that it's being coated. Uh, so it helps when you're in direct sunlight or anything like that, it gives a bit more uh, contrast too. Uh, if you don't have the T, it's fine. That would be one of the silver ones. A few rare ones were silver with the T, but this one we're gonna talk about the 80 millimeter planar. Uh, this goes on to all the lenses in the C T versions that all go with a leaf shutter that is a synchro comper. Uh, comper are shutters and they're inside the lens. This is a leaf shutter lens, which means the shutter is not on the camera, but on the lens, like we'll see. First thing I'm gonna do is take off the film back because I don't wanna expose film that I have in there. And we're gonna work with a camera like this. This is a great way to test your camera out if you uh, are curious about you know certain functions without advancing film and such. Always remember to recock everything so you don't lose the frame because if I shoot, and I put the back at it when I advance, that will go forward. First thing, we have the focusing ring, which is all around the outside here. So infinity all the way to three feet. This lens is in feet. Most lenses were made in meters, but this one's probably an American version and has feet. So very simple to move and focus. It has a long throw uh, around a bit more than 180 degrees. Yeah, like 270 degrees, works fairly easy. It should be very smooth. This is the aperture numbers. So it's a 2.8 lens, as you can see here. Let me put it on the high camera. So it's a 2.8 lens and it goes all the way in full stops to F22, but you can select intermediate stops. So it doesn't have to be exact. You know, you can have like a middle ground. You see there, 2.8 but between 2.8, I have the 60 there. So that's basically how it's gonna work because it's gonna work on the time. So your lens will stop in the clicks on the time settings, which the time settings, as I said right now, is 500th of a second max shutter speed all the way to one second and then bulb, okay? So shutter speed, aperture, okay? 2.8 to f22, one 500th of a second, all the way to one second or bulb. These numbers on the left have no actual real use except to give you a little cheat sheet for long exposures. I'll teach you that right now. These red numbers over here are EV readings. So you align this little arrow with whichever thing your light meter says and you have the right combination of f-stop and aperture, okay? Or f-stop, sorry, and shutter speed. So that's what that works for. So this all goes coupled. So if you wanna move these in differently and not together like it is right now, you have to pull this little lever towards you. So you see how that goes. And that un uncouples the lens, the, the aperture to the speed. So there you go, you see one way or the other. It's fairly easy, it's probably harder to do on video. But if you do, if I don't touch that, you see it goes all together. If I click it, one of them stays. It's kind of hard to do with a pen in my hand, but that you can see how it goes. So that's how it works, okay? That's one of the things that most people don't understand at the beginning is the fact that you have to uncouple the lens uh, 
shutter speed and the aperture with this little lever. Another thing we have over here is the um, basically depth of field, a preview depth of field. So what happens is imagine I have my lens at f16 right now. If I would open, you would see, let me see, you would probably see the camera in front of us, which is the A camera. But the moment I press this little lever inwards, this one here, it's gonna do a uh, stop down the lens and you can see uh, that right now. You see, now there's only that little aperture, which is F16 and through the lens, you probably can't see much because it's an F16. So one thing that can happen a lot, and this has happened to me many times, is you have this happen to you and you haven't realized you're trying to figure it out, opening the lens, stopping the lens, and you don't know how to get back to F2.8. So it's very simple. When you have it F16, um, now when I close it, it will close and it will open. So all you have to do is take it all the way open and now it locked, you see, and it's uncoupled. So basically what happens is when you close your lens or you stop it down to see the depth of the field preview, then you're stuck to that unless you want to, you go to the maximum aperture. So there we go to maximum aperture, 2.8, lens is open. And now when I stop it down like that to F11, it's still open. The camera will stop it down exactly when it's the time. You saw that, but it does it automatically. So you don't have to remember to stop the down the lens when you're gonna shoot. The camera will remember what setting it is and will stop it down itself, which is very useful. Then on this side, we have the PC sync, which will sync at all speeds because it's a leaf shutter. So for one 500th of a second, if you really wanna freeze that action all the way to bulb or one second, anything you want, PC sync, this little thing works great. Make sure it works. Sometimes it does fail on all lenses. I have one lens that every now and then it will work properly. That's probably a cable inside the lens that's uh, gone loose or is about to go, you know, wrong. And then this on the side here is very interesting. And to me is one of the reasons I like these lenses better than the modern CF lenses. This uh, X is the flash sync, which means it's for electronic flashes. And M is for the old school flashes. You know, those poof light bulb flashes. So yeah, the M is something you rarely would ever use nowadays. X is the one you want to use if you're using modern flashes, anything like that. And the V and this little extra lever do something very interesting, which is a self uh, timer. So you don't need a self timer screwed in here and you know you like release or anything like that. There's a trick to use a self timer on the lens. So this is a 500 CM, which comes with this little lever here that has O and T. And to me, O would say something that's like open and T is like time. So you put it on T, nothing really changes right now, nothing's changing. Then you hold this lever. Let me see if I can do that. Hold this lever towards the outside. So you got to push it outwards, push it outwards. And this little X lever, you push it towards the V. You're going to hear it cranking. Let's see, it's hard to do. There you go. Now it's stuck at the V, you see? And now what happens is when I press the shutter, it's gonna have a little self timer inside the lens that's gonna count, I don't know if it is two to three seconds, shoot, close, because it has a second shutter. There's like a, a, the, the aperture blades and a shutter. And then the curtain on the back will remain open till I basically remove this from the T to the O. So very simple. You put to this to the T, you push this outwards, push it towards the V, stays there. Uh, choose your aperture and everything. Let's say f16 to 15th of a second, f22. Let's do something you can see. Okay, so f16, one second. Uh, let me show you guys how this looks. I'm going to press the shutter. It's on T and it should do the self timer. You hear the self timer. You saw one second and then it stops the uh, shutter closes. It did F16 and the back barn doors or stuck in uh, shutter is open. The moment you want to close it is pushing this inwards. You'll see that now you see, and now I can advance my frame or do multiple exposures if I want to. So that's the self timer, which is awesome on this camera only does it on the 500 CM. I haven't seen any other Hasselbots that have this. If you do have one, let me know. I'm very curious. Maybe the C has it, but it's very useful. Uh, you've seen how the exposure values work. 
But let's say we're doing a long exposure. Let's say it's uh, six and a little arrow there. So what happens? Imagine you want to shoot it at f22, okay? So we go all the way here to our lens and we go and it goes bulb and your f22, it says it's eight seconds, but I can't turn it, it won't go. So what you know is now that you have to do eight seconds. So it's already calculated your EV. So you put it there and now you would shoot, count eight seconds. And the moment I release, it would stop down and shut that. So that's how the lens works and that's how the long exposure thing works here. There's one thing that's failing in this lens and I wanna let you know, just so you know this. Um, there's these two little red tabs, one here and one all the way here. And this is the where they should be moving both at the same time. This should be going basically closing itself and opening itself. That is the depth of field for the aperture. So if I'm at 2.8, it should be super, super narrow down here. And as I stop down the lens, it starts growing. This lens must have have it uncoupled. So that's why it's all the way there. I'm not so concerned because I usually uh, already know pretty much what the depth of field is on these lenses. And I'm not so used to making very uh, stop down shots. So if I'm shooting F16, if I really want to know the depth of field, what you can do if it's broken, is hold this little uh, depth, of free, depth of field preview lever, the lens would stop down and with my loop, I would look and be like, oh, I can see this much in focus, that's what I want. So no big concern. And then as I said, if you wanna take that off, you open the lens all the way and it's ready. So that's how you use the Hasselblad lenses. Uh, it's very simple. The bayonet mount is uh, Bay 50 or Bay 60. If I'm not wrong, it's B50 for the CF or CT lenses, and the CF is uh, Bayonet 60, which is a little bigger. It's proprietary mount, but there's a bunch of adapters on eBay. I'll leave a link below to one from B50, B60, to screw mount 67 millimeters or whatever for your favorite uh, filters. If you wanna take the lens off, this is the button to here. You press it, you turn, and the lens comes off. This little arrow here is to mount it back on. So you see the red dot, inside the body here. I mount that little red triangle there and turn it till you hear a click. Uh, one thing that you wanna know on the lens too is the lens and the body have to be synced in what means, uh, what, the, what I wanna mean by that is if this is open and ready to shoot, the camera has to be ready to shoot. If the camera has been shot and I try to mount the lens, I can jam the Hasselblad, okay? So this one's ready to shoot and this one's shot. Don't put them together. Advance the camera. Once you're ready to shoot, you can mount your lens. If by any chance you've messed up, like here, I'm gonna mess it up on purpose. You see, I stop down the lens. You grab a screwdriver or something like it and carefully, you there's a little arrow, which you can see just barely there. You have to turn this lens, this little circle thing Sorry guys, focus. Turn this thing all the way, ugh, hard to record and do it, all the way till it clicks. You see it opening? And now it's locked. So this lens now is ready to mount again. Put it back on the body and you're ready. Works fine. So that is all about the Hasselblad lens and how to use it. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be making one for the CF uh, version of these lenses because I think it's important to understand the differences. But yeah, this is all about these CT uh, lenses for Hasselblad for the V series. If you want to know anything else, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.